Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is spoon. S P O O N. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Groucho, sorry, my name's Yasmin Cam. Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who gets first whack at it? Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a bouncer from a dance hall and an accountant. And here they are, Mr. Alan Landman and bouncer Bill Graves. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gentlemen. You bet your life. And if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. Bill... Uh... Graves. Bill Graves, huh? You're a bouncer at a da- dance hall? Yes, sir. Where are you from, Bill? I'm from uh, within a stone throw of the Churchill Downs in Lexington, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And you, what do you do? You throw stones around there? Oh, I don't want to throw, yes, sir. Bookkeeper, Alan uh, Landman? Yes, bookie? sir. I'll just call you Bookie, yeah? No. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a Bookie, yeah? Huh? But I better call you Bookkeeper, is that right? No, that's not right either. I'm an accountant. You're very hard to please, aren't you? <laughs> I'll call you Count, is that all right? <laughs> or Int. I was Int, huh? <laughs> Tell me, account, uh, what do you do as an accountant? Oh, I make income tax returns out for people, give them general advice on their financial statements, and audit their books. Mm-hmm. You keep books, and I'll just call you bookie, huh? <laughs> and if you get raided, don't come running to me. Huh? <laughs> where, where are you from, bookie? I was born within a stone's throw of the Fulton Fish Market in New York. <laughs> You were born near the uh, fish market, huh? That's right. Mm-hmm. And did you, how long did you flounder around there before you... <laughs> yeah, Al Smith was born around there, wasn't he? The oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. What's the most common bookkeeping error you find in your work, uh, Mr. Landman? I would say transposition. Well, you'll have to say more than that. I, <laughs> I, I mean... That left me as cold as those stones where you were born with them, huh? I mean, transposition of figures, that is, uh, writing $16,489.12 as $16,498.21, transposing the figures in sequence. Well, I lost you a long time ago. (laughs) And, uh, Jersey Bounce, tell me, uh, where do do you work? I work at the Roseland Roof, 833 South Spring Street. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what is Roseland Roof? It is the finest taxi dance hall in the United States. I didn't know taxis could dance. Eh? We have some two-legged taxis to dance very well, sir. Some night if you're off and you have a moment to spare... I'm I'd like off to every night, huh? I'd like to have you come down and visit us. Well, I'd be very happy to, huh? They strap a meter on me, I suppose. <laughs> what, what do you do at the Roseland Roof, Mr. Graves? I'm the manager, the elevator operator, the policeman. I'm a union man. I work eight hours in the morning and eight hours at night. <laughs> Did you figure that joke out on your boss's time? Or... <laughs> now tell me, Tacky Trot, uh, how, many... uh, how many girls uh, work at your dance emporium? Uh? Between 75 and 100. Those are pretty loose figures to have on a dance floor. <laughs> you, you handle figures too, don't you, uh, Alan? Uh, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. The figures you handle don't lie, I take it, huh? Oh, I wouldn't say that. You don't have to, I just said it. Huh? <laughs> Do you ever run, run across cases of simple fraud? Uh, what's yes. a good way to skin a widow out of her mite, for example? <laughs> well, you pad the figures on an expense account. As Steady now, this. <laughs> well, you're a rascal, that's what you are. <laughs> you pad the widow's figures? <laughs> well, how do you catch a crook like that? I mean, oh, you just use your logic. For example, uh, if a guy submitted an expense account showing that he was in the Sahara Desert and uh, that he entertained some people at a nightclub there for 187.50, you is would there a nightclub in the Sahara Desert? <laughs> Not that I know of. You mean this widow can only get cheated in the Sahara Desert? <laughs> <laughs> she can choose her own site. 
You mean it would take a lot of sand to skin her, huh? <laughs> now, tell me, does anything exciting ever happen to an accountant? Well, uh, something exciting happened to me once. I got into an airplane conducting five wooden packing cases that looked as if they might have contained cans of beans, and they actually had one million dollars in cold, hard American cash. And did you, did you have a gun with you? Anyway? Yes, I did. I was in the Army as a dispersing officer, and I had a forty-five strapped to my side. Have you ever had anything else strapped to your side? <laughs> Some mustard plaster. <laughs> well, there's worse things than that to be stuck with, you know. <laughs> now, tell me, Bouncer, in your job, does anything unusual ever happen? Oh, not a big deal. How much do you charge for a dance at your... Uh... Twelve cents a minute. Why your dance is only a minute long? Well, we can give the people more for the money and give them more dancing. <laughs> That's a fairly shifty answer there. I'm, I'm a Scotchman. You get a faster turnover, is that it? Faster turnover, is it? Yes, sir. They must turn over like a propeller in your place. <laughs> Now, do these people pop in just to dance for one minute? Or... Some come in and uh, sit around night after night, and all they do is dance the free dancers. <laughs> what night are the free dancers? <laughs> what do they talk about, the ones that don't dance? Have oh, you any they talk or... about uh, general subjects, uh, not uh, what you think. How do you know what I'm thinking? <laughs> How many fights do you have to stop in a night on an average? Uh, since I've been with Rose, Rose Land for the last 20 years, we've never had a fight in the place. Now, what but... do they do, go out in the alley and slug each other? <laughs> I walked in a place one time where we had to close on Sundays to pump the blood out of the cellar. You don't happen to remember what they did with the old blood, do you? <laughs> well, you two make an extremely interesting couple, and uh, we're happy to have you with us tonight. You're both experts on figures. Now, in just one minute, you're going to try for the DeSoto Plymouth a thousand dollar question. Just a week ago, the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America introduced the brilliant new DeSoto, the finest car that has ever borne the name DeSoto. It's a completely new model from bumper to bumper. From its beautiful new front grille to its wider rear end, here is the car that is styled for comfort as well as beauty. Every detail from DeSoto's rear window, which was made bigger and lower to provide greater visibility, to its smartly styled new steering wheel, from its bigger, softer pedal action brakes, to its beautiful new fenders that permit easier changing of tires, here truly is a new car in every sense of the word. A car bringing you richness of line that your family will boast of for many months to come. Economy of operation that your pocketbook will appreciate. Drive this great new DeSoto just once, and you'll thrill to it as thousands already have. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will arrange to have you drive it at your convenience. <laughs> Let's see if a bookkeeper and a bouncer will get the chance at the thousand dollars. Fenneman, tell them the rules of you bet your life. Each of our three couples has twenty dollars. They bet as much of that twenty as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth thousand dollar question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you twenty dollars. You selected famous dates in United States history as your category. Here's your first question. You have twenty dollars. How much will you bet? Three dollars. No, no, let's make it Here's ten. Here's a foul level there, a racetrack, huh? Uh, he said make it ten. Make it ten. Is that okay make with you, Bill? Make it ten is fine. Okay. What happened on October 12th, 1492? Columbus discovered America. You said it right on the nose, Bill. And we're off to a great start, Groucho, with $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $30 will you bet? Twenty. Not $20, no. Uh, make it fifteen. Make it twenty dollars, and all right. Huh? <laughs> what happened on December the seventh, for nineteen forty-one? That's a Pearl Harbor. Uh... That's right. Japanese attack Pearl Harbor. <laughs> They're climbing. They have fifty dollars. You're climbing. You got fifty smackers. Here's your third question. How much of the fifty are you going to go for? Uh, 
Well, we take, uh, this time we'll plunge a little. <clears throat> we bet $35. So, you're going to bet $35. Okay, all right. What happened? What happened? September 2nd, 1945. Was it VJ Day? VJ Day? Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, you agree I do. With that? Well, that's right. Now they have $85, Groucho. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the 85 will you risk? Let's try 75 $75. What far-reaching event happened on October 24th, 1929? The, uh, crash. The crash is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $160. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't run away. You still might be high tonight and get a crack at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still spoon. I know that, George. Perhaps our next couple will say it, too. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a chiropodist, Dr. Theodore Dale, and his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Sue Proson. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. All right, welcome, kids. Uh, welcome to your Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you find around the house. A uh, chiropodist and a housewife, eh? Dr. Uh, Dale, is that the way? That's correct. What kind of a name is that? Is that Swiss? Uh, well, it's leftover Piccadilly. <laughs> I had some leftover Piccadilly tonight. <laughs> that isn't my name. What do you mean, leftover Piccadilly? It's well, English? Way back, the family's name was Piccadilly, and this was left of it. Where, where are you from, Doc? Redondo Beach, California. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mrs. Sue uh, Proson? Mm-hmm. Where are you from, Sue? Boston. You're married? Yes. What does your husband do for a living? Building contractor. How did, how did you meet your husband? My mother wanted to borrow a hammer. Your mother went to borrow a hammer? Uh-huh. And she borrowed it from a friend, and uh, he had a son, only I didn't know he had a son. Who had a son, the hammer? No, no, it's very simple, really. The friend had a hammer. And that's how you nailed him? Uh, and then, yes. He came over and brought the hammer, and I wanted to get a dog. And when What's I, that? I wanted to get a dog, and when Instead I Instead of a hammer, you mean? Well, she wanted the hammer. I didn't. Oh, but when I saw this guy drive up, and he didn't have a very nice car, and I thought, well, I could ask him to take me for the dog because my boyfriend had a new car, and I couldn't ask him to take me for the dog. Why? Because he wouldn't let a puppy in his car. Well, when we got home, the landlady met us at the apartment, and she said, you can't have a dog here. Just a hammer, huh? <laughs> so, very simple, really. He took the dog home with him. And on the way home, he said, if you married me, you could have me and the dog. And I said, well, for the dog's sake, I'd think about it. But it took the family two months to arrange the wedding. Had no place to put the dog, I suppose. <laughs> no, the mother didn't want it. But we didn't get the dog. It got lost. Tell me, I want to ask you one question. What happened to this first meal that you were going with, huh? The one with this brand new car that uh, wouldn't let any livestock in it. Uh, what happened to him, huh? He still got the car. Still got the car and that's yeah. all, huh? Mm-hmm. And you've got a hammer and a dog and a husband and a cat, huh? No dog. No Just dog. a cat. You now you got a cat? <laughs> kids, too? Yes, two of them. Two kids. And only one cat, huh? <laughs> you ought to try to get another cat, huh? That's what you have to worry about. Either that or do away with one of the kids. One of the kids. <laughs> Doc, how did you meet your wife? Did you have a hammer in your hand at the time? Uh, oh, no, but I had a... Uh... Was she going around with some foot pad and you rubbed her out? And... <laughs> What happened? Well, she... I was... Uh, as a student, I I'll was... I'll call you Pick-a-Lily, yeah? <laughs> Pick-a-Dilly. Pick-a-Dilly, yeah? Uh, I picked the dilly one night. <laughs> well, anyway. I was a student at the foot clinics of New York, and my wife was a patient. And, uh, she was kind of cute at the time, and, uh... <laughs> and, uh... He'll, he'll appreciate the way you qualified that compliment. Huh? Well, I, uh, I suggested that, uh, being that she had so much trouble with her feet. Did you write her any footnotes? Or no, <laughs> no. And out of that time... Well, had, uh, up to this time, you'd just seen her feet, is that right? That's right. <laughs> Maybe that's the way it should be. Most fellas, they go around looking at a girl's face, you know. Maybe, <laughs> Maybe should they examine their feet, because they're... In most cases, their feet are not made up. You know what you're getting, anyway. <laughs> You two have two of the most romantic stories I've ever heard. <laughs> a pussycat in an old car and a, a 
Hotfoot, Doctor. Now, tell me, Hotfoot, how did you, uh... <laughs> how did you happen to become a chiropodist? Were you at the foot of your class in school, or...? <laughs> well, uh, I started the foot and thought that this profession might work, work my way up. Mm-hmm. You were eventually going to become a dentist, is that <laughs> Become successful. Oh, I see. Why do so many people have foot trouble? And a lot of it's traced back to childhood, and very uh, few parents will take the trouble to take their children to have their feet examined, and you find that 60% of children have foot trouble. Well, what kind of feet do you treat? Uh, uh... Any kind. Any kind of feet? Mm-hmm. I wish you'd come over to my house. My piano is getting pigeon toed the legs. <laughs> well, what's the chief reason that people come to your office? The feet hurt. Well, you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. <laughs> I knew if I talked to a chiropodist, sooner or later I'd put my foot in it. One or another. <laughs> you mean people have trouble with their dogs, is that it? That's right. And you take care of their dogs? I sure do. Well, then actually you're a veterinarian, huh? <laughs> no, I'm a chiropodist. What's the matter, dog? Didn't you like that joke? <laughs> oh, I thought, well, it's corny. What was that? Corny. Corny, corny joke. Well, you ought to know. You're an expert on corns. You know? <laughs> what are the most common uh, foot ailments? Well, the most common we'd say would be uh, Helome Male, Helome Durham, and Halitz Hello, Valdez. my Male, huh? Yeah? <laughs> hello, my Male. Hello, my daddy. <laughs> Why, Joseph Howard sang that, and I wonder who's kissing her now, huh? You mean that's a foot disease? By the way, Doc, my wife's foot uh, hurt quite a bit this morning. Could you suggest anything that might help? Well, if you tell me where it hurts. Well, it hurts in the seat of my pants. That's why she's hurt. <laughs> I tricked you into that one. <laughs> well, you made a very interesting and instructive team, and we enjoyed having you here. Now, you're going to have a chance to make money hand over foot, Doc. <laughs> you're going to play your bet your life. All you got to do is run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question later on. Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The accountant and the ballroom bouncer won $160. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you 20 bucks. You selected bowl games. Uh, bowl games. B-O-W-L. Now you got $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. Talk right up into the microphone. Because over 300 people are listening here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In what city is the sugar bowl game played? New Orleans. In New Orleans is right. <laughs> and they're on the way with $30, Groucho. See how easy it is? Now you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 are you going to risk? 20 Where is the Orange Bowl game play? Miami, Florida. Miami is right. <laughs> and now they have $50. Now you got 50 Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to try? 30 $30. In what city is the Shrine East-West game play? San Francisco. San Francisco is on the nose. They're climbing now. They have $80. All right. You're steaming right ahead now. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 80 are you going to risk? Talk up. Talk right up. Into the microphone. She wants to bet 60. She wants to bet 60. And how much do you want to bet? I'd rather bet the whole 80. You would, huh? Okay. Okay, You want to go whole hog? You're going for $80. In what island city is the pineapple bowl play? In uh, Honolulu. Honolulu is right. And they wind up with $160. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, pretty soon be, we're going to know who's going to end the chance at the $1,000 question. George, who's ahead so far? Well, nobody's ahead so far. Nobody's ahead so far. Both the first couples have $160. You mean they're neck and neck? They're neck and neck. Well, let's hope they don't do any neck and neck in here, huh? (laughs) And let's not forget that the DeSoto Plymouth secret word is still spoon. Say, Groucho, we have a surprise for you. Our final couple is an Irish war bride and her husband. And here they are, Mr. and Mrs. Wysowski meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, youngsters. And if you say the secret word, you win $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. uh, Wysowski, you're an Irish bride? Yes. Wysowski, you one of the Notre Dame Irish, is <laughs> Faith and Begar and Barry Fitzgerald. Uh, sure, and it's a fine thing to be after having you here with us here tonight. Huh? How's my broke? 
<laughs> they don't talk that way where I come from. <laughs> they also don't talk that way where I come from. <laughs> Well, I must admit, my brogue's a little rusty. You know? <laughs> Last night I had an Irish stew and somebody dropped a hot tamale in it. <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe Wysowski, huh? That's right. What sort of work do you do, Joe? I'm a mechanic with Lockheed Aircraft. Lockheed Aircraft? Mm-hmm. What part of Ireland are you from, Joe? Kewanee. Kewanee, Illinois? That's correct. <laughs> and what part of Ireland are you from, uh, Phyllis? Belfast. Belfast. Yeah. How long since you've been in Belfast? About five years. You have no discernible uh, brogue at all, do you? We don't talk the same way as they do in the south. In the south of Ireland? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How long have you been an Irish war bride, Phyllis? Well, we were married uh, the day after St. Patrick's Day in 1945. Mm-hmm. Do you have any little Irish males at home? Or? No, I haven't. Have you? No. <laughs> Joe, Joe, me lad, uh, how long have you been married? I got married when Phyllis did. <laughs> what were you doing in Ireland? Uh? Well, I was an aircraft mechanic for Lockheed. In Ireland? Yes. When you were courting Phyllis over in Ireland, uh, where, did you, where did you take her, Joe? Well, we went for an occasional walk, a show once in a while. Mm-hmm. Oh, now that you're an old married couple, where do you take her now for excitement? I think that's the look that won her, huh? <laughs> that was a real Barry Fitzgerald look, wasn't it? Huh? Where do you take her now that you're married, Joe? Don't sneak out of this. I want an answer. Here. Well, we still go for the occasional walk in the show once in a while. <laughs> Say, you're, you're in a rut, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> now, before you met uh, Joe here, how many nice Irish bucks were you engaged to, Phyllis? None. I was too young. In Ireland, the girls don't get engaged, I suppose, until they're around 23, 24, yeah? That's right. Yes. And how, how long do the engagements usually last? Oh, about three or four years. Takes four years for a boy and girl to get acquainted in Ireland? It's obvious they don't have drive-in theaters over there. <laughs> over here, they have ten-minute intermissions at the drive-in so the kids can get married. Huh? <laughs> have you ever kissed the Blarney Stone, Phyllis? No, that's in the side. But well, since you never kissed the Blarney Stone, would you tell me how old you are? Twenty-seven. Are you sure you haven't kissed the Blarney Stone? <laughs> how old are you, Joe? I'm thirty-five. Tell us how old do you think I am, and uh, no flattery now. Oh, I'd say about forty. <laughs> are you sure there's no Blarney Stone in the north of Ireland? <laughs> If you were a pinball machine right now, you'd light up and say tilt. (laughs) Joe, you you look uh, a little more practical. How old do you think I am? Oh, I'd say you're going on 50. No, I'm going on penicillin. (laughs) I grow my own, too. I scrape it off old moldy jokes. Well, you each made a pretty close guess, 40 and 50. That's 90. That's about right. <laughs> well, this has been inspiring having you here tonight, Aaron Gobra, as we sell so we say. Now, you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game, you bet your life. If you beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The first two couples are tied with $160 each. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected capitals of states as your category. Is that correct? All right. You've got $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. What is the capital city of Colorado? Denver. Denver is correct. And they're on their way with $30, Groucho. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? Talk right up, Joe. Twenty. Twenty dollars. What is the capital city of Nebraska? Lincoln. Lincoln is correct. They're climbing. They have $50. All right, you got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to risk? $40. $40. What is the capital city of Virginia? Richmond. Richmond is right. They're really on their way now. They have $90. Well, you're zooming along. You got $90. How much are you going to try? We'll try $80. you are going to try $80. What is the capital city of New York? 
Albany. Albany is right. And they wind up with $170. And that means that the Irish couple get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth thousand dollar question. <laughs> It's new. It's beautifully new. It's packed with value and ready to prove it. Yes, that's the beautiful new Plymouth. Now, more than ever, the car that likes to be compared. Drive it. Give it the toughest test you can think of, uphill and through traffic. Let your DeSoto Plymouth dealer arrange a demonstration ride tomorrow. Then compare. Compare the value in this beautifully new Plymouth with that in other leading low-priced cars. Check the convenience of Plymouth's ignition key starting the lively power of a high-compression engine, the soft, velvet stops of safeguard hydraulic brakes, the protection of safety rim wheels, and many other exclusive Plymouth features. Yes, check and compare. For beauty, for room, for riding comfort. Now, more than ever, the new Plymouth is the car that likes to be compared. The car that's packed with value and ready to prove it. This beautiful new Plymouth, the American beauty, is on display at all authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And here's the Irish war bride and her husband, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. The Star Spangled Banner was written in 1814 and became our official national anthem in 1931. Before the Star Spangled Banner was written, what song was considered the national anthem of the United States? Okay, what's the answer you two have decided upon? I'm afraid I can't answer it. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The correct answer is Hail Columbia. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $170 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week's big question will be worth $1,500. Well, it's time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. It's good to be on time, but it's better to be safe. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.